Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. You know the rest, John 8, 12. Uh, this is going to be the start of, well, it's kind of a warning. The There's a group of people that call themselves oneness or anti what they call Trinitarians. And what they will try to do is convince you that the Godhead is a false doctrine. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, what they'll do is they'll get rid of the word Godhead, and then they'll insert the word Trinity, and then say, oh, well, you people that believe that Jesus is God, uh, you believe in three gods and say oh god the father uh god the son or the son of god and the holy spirit being god and they'll say oh well you got three gods and the bible says there's only one god so what they'll do is start using a modern perversion bible that's based on Vatican manuscripts and not the Greek majority text manuscripts of which the King James and the Geneva Bible, which they are based on. Those are, well, in English. Martin Luther's Bible was based upon the uh, Greek text also. All the modern Bibles use the Vatican texts either Sinaiticus, uh, and they actually spell it S-I-N, Sin Atticus. And then the other one's called Vaticanus. Uh, when you look at it, it's spelled Vatican's Anus. Seriously, the last four letters is A-N-U-S. Vatican's Anus. Uh, yeah. And what comes out of the Vatican's, well, you get the idea. And if you don't know what an anus is, look it up. And that's what, uh, well, that's what comes out of the Vatican, in my opinion. Uh, you know, I'm trying not to be crude, but, I mean, really, they named it, not me. Okay? So, you could either have sin or an anus. Now, I'm going to stick with the Greek majority text. So, what they'll do is I'll use a modern Bible... And the whole attack on the Godhead is to try to convince people that Jesus is not God in the flesh. That's the whole thing. Oh, well, he was just a man. He was just a prophet. And uh, now there's other prophets that did some of the same miracles that Jesus did. But there's not a prophet in the Old Testament that did all the miracles that Jesus did. I mean, you know, you had this prophet that might have done a couple of the things that Jesus did, and then that prophet did other miracles that Jesus did. But Jesus, you know, he fed the 5,000. He raised the dead. He gave sight to the blind, healed those that were crippled. I mean, ugh. you know, and that's the thing. They want to convince you that only God the Father is God. And what they don't want you to understand is Christ had a dual nature. He was God come in the flesh. That's a reason why the virgin birth was so important. You know, there was a reason for that. The virgin birth. I mean, <laughs> but uh, they will try to convince you that uh, if you believe in the Godhead, they'll call it the Trinity and say, well, you go three gods. Well, guess what? The Bible teaches that man was created, uh, God created man in his image. And then the Bible will tell you that man has a body, man has a soul, man has a spirit. 
Does that make you three persons? No. Do you have a body? Absolutely. Do you have a soul and spirit? Well, I hope so. The Bible teaches they're not the same. I mean, absolutely teaches the soul and the spirit are different. So, you know, like I say, uh, the you know who's are their claim to be oneness. And then the Muslims are also along that line. They claim to be oneness. You know, they deny Christ is God in the flesh. And then you've got a group of Pentecostals that call themselves Oneness Pentecostals. Now, and the, oh, and the Jehovah's Witnesses are also in that uh, dung pile. Yeah, they're also in that mess. See, they all attack the deity of Christ. Christ was God in the flesh. And you can read about that in 1 Timothy 3.16. Now, I'm anticipating doing a study on why the Holy Spirit is considered a person. The Jehovah's Witnesses will say, oh, no, no, no. The Jehovah, you know, God, the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit is just a... Uh, like electricity. You know, it's his active force, as they call it. But I think it was Paul. Was it Paul? I don't remember. In the book of Acts, um, Ananias and Sapphira lied. Oh, maybe it was Peter. Uh, they lied about a purchase price of a place and they were giving the money to the apostles and uh, one of the apostles I think it was Peter now um, asked him why did you lie to the Holy Ghost you have not lied unto men you've lied unto God you know so if the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit is electricity how do you lie to electricity oh you lied to the wall socket uh, really? And the Holy Spirit guides us into all truth. Uh, the wall socket guides us into all truth? Really? So, in 1 Thessalonians 5.23, Paul writes, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, W-H-O-L-L-Y, you know, totally, completely, uh, not H-O-L-Y, uh, but totally and completely. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit, one, spirit, one, and soul, two, and body, three, and I pray God your whole spirit, soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul says man has a spirit and a soul and a body. Oh, that makes you three different persons, don't it? Yeah. Uh, you know, these idiots, they call themselves oneness. I mean, I'll admit the God has not an, an easy doctrine to understand. I'll admit that. But these people that totally, just totally deny all this stuff, either they're baby believers that just shouldn't be teaching anything, or they're deceivers, which is probably, the latter is probably true. So, now, the thing is, they're going to try to convince you that Jesus Christ is not God in the flesh. That's their whole purpose. In Isaiah 10, 18, And shall consume the glory of his forest and of his fruitful field, 
both soul and body. And they shall be as when a standard bearer fainteth. So your, your soul and your body are not the same. How about Jesus in Matthew 10, 28? Jesus said, And fear not them which kill the body, and fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. They can kill your body. They can't kill your soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Soul and body in hell. I mean, you know, and these oneness people, they, they just, they don't understand the distinction. And they will try to make you think that, uh, oh, well, if you believe in the Godhead, you're a Trinitarian and you got three gods. Idiots. Like I say, their whole point is to deny Christ is God in the flesh. That is their whole purpose. And that is, you know, what did Christ do? I mean, he did all those miracles to prove who he was. But not only that, when he healed the, uh, the, those that were lame, he said, thy sins be forgiven thee. And then all the you-know-whos are going, this guy's blaspheme, blaspheming. How he, he, you know, only God can forgive sins. Who is this guy? Well, either Jesus can forgive sins or he can't. If he's not God, he can't forgive sins. So technically, these oneness people, I have to wonder if they even have a Savior. Really. I wonder. But, I'm not going to be the one making that decision. God the Father or Christ himself will be making that decision. In Isaiah 26, verse 9, With my soul have I desired thee in the night, yea, with my spirit within me. Hmm, wait a minute. Hold on here. With my soul, with my soul, have I desired thee in the night? Yea, with my spirit within me, will I seek thee early, for when thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. So soul and spirit are different, right? How about the book of Hebrews? 4.12 For the word of God is quick, and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Ah, the Word of God can divide the soul and the spirit. Huh, okay. So the body's different, and the soul and the spirit are different. piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Hmm. Now, 1 Timothy 3.16. Now you got to remember something. Paul was a trained rabbi. He went to Bible college. All the rest of the apostles? No. And he was taught by Christ himself in the desert. I think for like three years or something. I something like that. He got a he got a real education. But Paul writes to Timothy in 1 Timothy 3:16. 
He says, and without controversy. See, this is not even controversial. This is a fact. This is only controversial if you use the Vatican's anus or the sin of the Atticus. But if you use the King James or the Geneva, well, guess what? It's not controversial at all. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. God, God was manifest in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh. Do you get it? Justified in the spirit. Seen of angels. Preached unto the Gentiles. Believed on in the world. Received up into glory. And then they'll say, well, uh, 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 Jesus was praying to the Father. Uh, yeah. Jesus in the flesh was praying to God the Father. Absolutely. Jesus said that the Father is greater than I. Yeah, Jesus in the flesh, God the Father was greater than him. But he also said, I and my Father are one. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I mean, you know, it's just Christ was God in the flesh. You know what the NIV says? He appeared in a body. Who appeared in a body? Who? He. He is who? The devil? Mary? Uh, Lazarus? Every person ever born appears in a body. The Bible, the King James says, God was manifest in the flesh. The NIV just says, well, he appeared in a body. He who? You don't even know who they're talking about. Just he. He. I mean, why doesn't the NIV say Jesus? Oh, Jesus appeared in a body. Big whoop de doo You think it makes a difference? No. He appeared in a body. Well, when you get born, you appear in a body. Everybody. There's billions of people on this earth that appeared in a body. That's why I tell people, take the NIV and burn it. It's a satanic piece of trash. Printed by the company that's owned by the company that prints the Satanic Bible and the joy of gay sex and gay porn. Uh, and you're going to trust these people? And it had a sodomite and a lesbian on the translating committee. And they're probably laughing. Oh, the stupid churchgoers. They won't know the difference. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah. Oneness. God was manifest in the flesh. Christ left heaven to come to earth. Seriously. What did John the Baptist say? Uh, I guess we ought to read that, huh? All right, book of John, chapter 3, verse 26. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was that was with thee beyond Jordan, you know, and remember John the Baptist uh, baptized Jesus. He that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizeth, and all men come to him. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. Verse 29. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom. Now what's the bride? The church, Israel. 
He that hath the bride is the bridegroom. Who's the groom? Christ. But the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This is my joy, therefore is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. He that cometh from above who came from above? Christ did. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. Who came from heaven? Christ did. Christ existed before the world it was even in existence. Christ said, I and my Father are one. I mean, come on, people. Oh, but the oneness people, yeah. So, the Bible teaches that man has a body, man has a soul, and man has a spirit. Let's see. How many parts is that? Let's see. Body is one. Soul is two. And spirit is uh, three. Body, soul, spirit. So that means I'm three people, right? I'm triplets. Hey, I'm triplets. I didn't even know that. Yeah. Oh, that's a Trinitarian thing, but I'm a oneness person. No. A body, soul, and a spirit makes one person. One man or, or one woman. And then in Genesis 1.26, we read, And God said, Let us, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And then there's people say, well, he was talking to the angels. No, no, no. The angels didn't help with the creation. Verse 27. Genesis 1, 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Now, personally, I think that all the souls, this is when uh, the souls and spirits were uh, created. That's my guess. And if you've got a, another better thing, I'd like to hear it, but that's just my guess. You know, I'm just the guy. There's a lot of things in the Bible I don't understand. But, uh, so... Let us make man in our image after our likeness. So, Genesis 9, 6. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed, for in the image of God made he man. See, that's why murder is such a, considered a capital crime. And if we were a godly country, there'd be no such thing as prisons. No, because if you committed a capital crime, uh, you wouldn't be doing the time. There'd be execution, period. But you had to be 100% sure. I mean, it's not into this, well, DNA evidence, you know, he's got a fingerprint on, blah. no, no. For an execution, somebody had to have two or three witnesses against them. So, so if one man is a body, soul, and spirit, which is three parts, and God made man in his image, how many parts is God? Does God have a body, a soul, and a spirit? Well, Jesus had a body. And perhaps God the Father is considered the soul. And what about the spirit? The Holy Spirit? The Holy Ghost? Um, 
I'm going to do a thing on the Holy Ghost proving that the Holy Ghost is absolutely a person. And all these flip-flopping Pentecostals that are always, oh, the Holy Ghost, uh, the Holy Ghost, uh, Holy Ghost. Uh. Well, the Bible teaches something a little different. Uh, John chapter 15, verse 24. Jesus speaking. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did. That's right. Christ did miracle after miracle after miracle. He did all the miracles of the Old Testament prophets and then some. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my Father. So they not only hate Christ, they hate God the Father too. But this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. Listen carefully. 26. But when the comforter but when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. See, the Spirit of truth, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit is going to testify of Christ. Tell that to the flip-flopping Pentecostals. You know, they're always, oh, the Holy Ghost this and the Holy Ghost that. Oh, well, the Holy Ghost is going to take you, show you to lead you to Jesus. But when the Comforter has come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye also shall bear witness, shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. So there you go. Um, I think I want to make this like a introduction, and we will, I will go into the Holy Spirit being God. Um, I've. I'm going to have to look, but uh, I've already done video on Jesus being God in the flesh. I mean, it's like Paul says, it's without controversy. You know, people want to, if you want to make Jesus just a man, well, then he's not your savior. And look at the watchtower. Jesus is not their savior. The watchtower organization is their savior. Seriously. They, they, they think that because their name is in the um, their record book, that that's the book of life. To them, it is. I had a guy I knew in, when I was in high school... He was uh, one of their devotees, and we were buddies, and he, um, they even taught that the world was going to end in 75, 76, and guess what? It didn't. So they're false prophets. Did he drop out of the organization? No. They said, well, you know, we... We, we, we were misled, but now we have new light. Yeah, from the angel of light. An angel of light, which is darkness. I mean, you would think that uh, once... Uh, well, the Jehovah's Witnesses have done a lot of uh, false date setting. You'd think after five or six times, uh, you know, people would wake up. But they don't. Because their faith is not in Christ. Their faith's is in 
an organization. Seriously. Well, my faith isn't in any organization. And people, I hope none of your none of you have your faith in me because I will I will mess up. I've messed up in the past and I'll probably mess up in the future. But don't ever follow me unless I'm leading you to Christ. That's all I can tell you. But I'm telling you, people, Jesus is God in the flesh. And there, when he prayed, he was being an example for us in the flesh. That's just the way it was. But when he was doing his miracles and forgiving sins, he was acting in the office of God. So, do with it what you will. All I know is, <laughs> Jesus said, I am. In Mark 14, oh, verse 60. The trial of Jesus by the you know who's. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, saying, Answerest thou nothing? What is it which these witness against thee? Verse 61. But he held his peace and answered nothing. Again the high priest asked him and said unto him, Art thou the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Anybody tries to tell you that all the Bible prophecies were fulfilled in 70 AD or whatever are turning Christ into a liar. They call him preteris. Uh, did you see Christ coming in the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven? Uh, me neither. So this has to be future. And then they'll say, well, you're a futurist. No, sometimes, you know, some prophecies of the Bible are future. Some of them are past. Some of them have a, a partial fulfillment and then an ultimate, complete and total fulfillment. And Jesus said, I am. And ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest rent his clothes and saith, what need we any further witnesses? And then he's accusing Jesus of blasphemy and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah. The guy brought the dead back to life. I, I want to see the high priest do that. I want to see you bring dead people back to life. No, they couldn't bring people back to life. They could kill people, but they couldn't bring them back to life. Because all they had in them was the power of death. Jesus has the power of life and death. John chapter 8. Oh boy. Everybody that names the name of Christ should be forced to read this chapter. This is one of those chapters in the Bible that... Uh, those of the John Hagee persuasion will never read this chapter in their so-called church. John 8, 24. Jesus speaking to the you-know-whos. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. That doesn't sound like a good thing that ye shall die in your sins, for if you believe not that I am he, if you believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Very important. Jesus is I am. When 
the burning bush. Moses said, hey, uh, okay, you're sending me to my people. Uh, and they're going to ask me, well, what's this God's name? What's his name? So what am I going to tell them? He said, I am. Tell them I am hath sent you. I am that I am. Huh. But uh, the names of God, that's an interesting study. It really is. A lot of shades of meaning. Uh, God that provides, uh, the healer. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of, uh, there's some good studies on the names of God in the Bible. A lot of, you know, you could look it up. Um, I mean, I could probably do one, but there's so many people out there that have already done it and done excellent jobs, work on it, that I kind of feel it's I, it's not something I need to do. I try to cover the stuff that uh, is not covered too much. But like I say, these oneness people they end up denying that Christ was anything special. Oh, he was just a godly man. You know, he was more godly than anybody else. But he was just a man. Really? Huh, well, maybe you should try raising the dead. Well, if you believe in the Trinity, you are you believe in three gods. Well, well, I guess you don't have a soul and a spirit, and you're just a body. Because the Bible says you're three parts, body, soul, and spirit. So maybe you just have a body. Then again, maybe these people don't have a soul and a spirit. Maybe they're just devils in the flesh. I don't know. So... All right, well, this is the end of this, and we'll uh, continue on this oneness thing. Uh, maybe I'll do the Holy Spirit. Maybe I'll do proof that um, Jesus is uh, God the flesh. I don't know. First Timothy 3.16, it nails it for me and all the miracles that he did. Even in the you know who ish encyclopedia, they even admit that Jesus did all kinds of miracles. A lot of them. Of course, they teach that he was a master of Kabbalah. Uh, I don't think so. But hey, that's just my opinion. You know, they teach that he was a master of it. And uh, he used it for evil purposes because he tried to trick all the people of Israel into worshiping him. Yeah, I've read all the, I've read, well, maybe not all the arguments, but I've read a lot of them. But you got to know what they believe to prove them wrong. And believe it or not, that's why I went to Bible college. You got to learn what they teach, like the pre-trib rapture and uh, dispensational or dispensational uh, theology. You got to know what it is to teach to, to prove it wrong. So, yeah. And when you got a gold coin, uh, you don't want a counterfeit piece of paper, right? You want the the real thing and I'm sorry coke is not the real thing not to me anyway so all right well all blessings praise glory and honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son Jesus who is the Christ in his precious name amen <laughs>